I recently passed the RHCSC exam and I've been receiving comments on some of the videos I've made about my experience on, you know, things to avoid or say, you know, mistakes that uh, people that are preparing for this exam should uh, avoid. So uh, in this short video, I would like to go through what I consider to be like the top 10 uh, things that could easily make you fail. And this not just from my own experience, but others that have taken the test as well. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe, give a thumbs up. Uh, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments. Let's get started. The first thing I would say is uh, forgetting how to change the root password. This might sound, you know, sort of uh, straightforward, but uh, it's really important because other tasks are tied to this. So what I mean by that, by that is that you could be asked to do to carry out task on a particular VM, but then you would need to re, uh, reset the root password before you're able to do that. And then if you're not able to do that, then that's a big problem. You that's an automatic like you're just there's no way you're going to pass because uh, you could have like five to ten different questions on that particular VM. So uh, a fix for that or what I would suggest you do is practice how to, you know, um, set reset the root password as often as possible so each time you're trying to you, you're doing your practice exams make sure that you uh, reset the password and start you know from the from the beginning so it becomes like muscle memory so that's essentially using uh, rd.break of course so uh, that's number one two poor time management right so don't get stuck, you know, uh, skip and return later. Don't get uh, stuck on a particular um, question because uh, the time keeps going. The exam is three hours long and it's nonstop. Uh, once you log in and start, it doesn't uh, stop. So um, it's best you sort of, you know, skip to uh, things, you know, you'll be able to complete, you know, on time. Uh, you you should be timing yourself while you, while you practice for the exam. While you do your labs, while you, while you do your hands-on uh, practice sessions, mock exam, uh, time yourself, you know, just so you know that uh, you're ready, uh, both by knowing um, how to do the task and by keeping to time. Number three, avoiding the exam objectives well of course you're not going to avoid the objectives intentionally but so what i mean is uh, not preparing with the exam objectives in mind so uh, maybe you've got books that you're reading and you just go through the books and you uh, do the practice exams for instance that's good but you should have the exam objectives at the back of your mind like you should have uh, it's it's readily available just google rhcsc exam objective view it takes you to uh, red red hat's uh, website uh, the point is while you prepare you should be able to do everything that's on that list to be on the safe side you know like be able to do everything that is covered on the list and uh, number four is not rebooting to test your configuration so what what do i mean every task any change you make should persist a reboot right and what this and uh, what number four means here is that you if you avoid or if you skip um rebooting you know after completing a couple of tasks i'm not saying you you keep rebooting you spend a lot of time rebooting no there are tasks that uh, most persists for example networking right if you have seen comments uh, people saying oh, I got zero in networking or in containers, or I got zero in containers. So that's because, or, it's, or storage. So storage, LVM, LVM stuff, right? That's because you probably didn't check. You, you only checked your configuration. You did not reboot to see that it persist. For storage, for example, maybe you added the uh, a new partition, a new file system in HCFS tab, but you didn't check to see that um, it persists after rebooting. So that's a problem. Uh, you, it could lead to a lot of, like you, you could get a lot of zeros in different sections for not checking this. Then number five is uh, man pages. So not using man pages efficiently or not even using man pages at all. Uh, that would be strange anyways, if you're ready for the RHS exam, you're, you're, you are in the exam and 
you're unable to use man pages it is uh, you should know that you do not have access to the internet right so you cannot open a web page to search for things so it has to be man pages or info pages with with man pages um learn how to you know use forward slash it's just like vim it's like you're searching in vim or vi learn how to use forward slash then you put the keyword right to say i am looking for this particular keyword so it takes you there also learn how to search um look through examples of commands how they work you know learn how to search and look uh, similar or if you go beneath you see it says c also for example learn how to find similar commands that do the same thing number six not you know doing a lot of hands-on practice remember this exam is um, it's not a multiple choice kind of you know exam you, you don't get multiple choice uh, questions so it has to be you you have to be very familiar with uh, the terminal you have to be familiar with uh, carrying a task hands-on so practice so you get um you have muscle memory uh, bits theory you know every time in as as far as this exam is concerned so you have to be very you know familiar with uh, uh the terminal doing sh doing you know copying files you know archiving doing you have to practice a lot I mean, like a lot. There is no such thing as too much practice. Number seven, uh, skipping the uh, Podman login. That's this is this has to do with the container part. You you would need to uh, create a container, right? For example, if that's what you have been asked, the image you need to create that uh, the Docker file is usually uh, hosted somewhere on a registry that's in within that your environment in which your systems. Uh, your vm have access to you will have to log in and uh, it's easy to skip to to not find the uh, inst um, the login credentials the username and password which is provided because it's somewhere in the instructions so you'll have to carefully read the instructions to you know extract this information just so you can use that to log in and uh, pull your your container file or use the blue get to download it or just even build that di directly from the container registry the point is just remember that you have to log in to the registry to download the file then number eight uh, forgetting you know se linux and firewall d uh, components of the exam so by forgetting i mean um it's very easy you you could have a task that requires that you check the the file context, SC Linux, SC Linux file context, it's not going to be spelled that way, like say, okay, check the SC Linux file context. It will just tell you this server, for example, a web server is uh, serving a particular, it's it's serving a web, um, web page on a particular port other than the default port, which is port 80, for instance. That's what we, we all know. It's left for you to be able to troubleshoot SC Linux. It's left for you to be able to check if that port is, you know, um, added as SC, uh, as a HTTP port on SC Linux. So uh, knowing that is really important. It's easy to uh, to forget to forget also that you need to have firewall D allowing um, that particular port, for instance. So firewall D, um, SC Linux security stuff that's very common it's uh, a very common reason why uh, most people fail number nine not enabling services on boot so what do i mean um for example if you're doing auto fs things with nfs so you're trying to do nfs and have um users use nfs as their home directory for instance or you're doing um container stuff the, the one we just spoke about the container stuff you would need to make sure that uh the service podman for example is running is enabled and is enabled to run you know on system boot so what do i mean instead of doing uh, for example system ctl enable then you give the service and then you do system ctl start you could just do uh, make it a habit to just do system ctl enable dash dash now and give the service so it, it means it's going to enable it and then have it start it's going to start start it and then enable it for uh, next reboot so you don't have to worry about it again and then uh, lastly you've been unfamiliar with the exam environment 
uh, this is really important because uh, unless you're taking the exam for the second time, it means you're not familiar with the environment, the exam environment, the, um, you know, they've got like, like the simulator, the website, the portal they use for the exam. So you have to know the layout, you know, before uh, the exam day. It's going to help you. It's going to save you um, a lot of time. Uh, there's a video by uh, Red Hat. I, I did talk about it in my video, which I'm going to link in the comments below. Uh, you know, the video I made about my experience, um, how I passed the RHCSC exam. So that video should uh, help you familiarize yourself with the environment, what it looks like. You know, you've got a couple of VMs too, essentially, and then you've got another server. So um, unless you understand how to, you know, move around in that environment, uh, it's, it's going to waste some of your time, which you don't have on the exam trying to figure out what the environment should look like. So those are what I uh, consider like the top 10 uh, reasons, I would say. There are others, of, of course, uh, but uh, these are some that I have seen comments on uh, more, you know, often from uh, people like uh, the reasons why uh, they've been unable to, to pass at least on their first uh, attempt. Please do drop a comment and I'll answer uh, any question you've got. Also remember I have the RHCSA series, the hands-on series from part one to part 10, which I covered all the RHCSA exam objectives. So uh, I also link the playlist. I've got a playlist. I'll link that uh, below as well. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.